to say where it's been is probably more interesting than where it's going. If you're the company, where it's going is pretty interesting. If you're the photographer, it's definitely less so. You know, the uh, it's all about if, you know. Well, where's it been? Well, where it's been has been a place where you, as an individual photographer, could do something. There were few enough other photographers that you weren't eating each other's uh, seed corn and uh, right arms, and that you could actually, if you had a certain level of talent, you could actually get to be one of those people who got sent somewhere or asked to go do a trip or uh, were somehow able to uh, do something commercially with your material. Nowadays, it's much more about the aggregation of imagery and the aggregation of journalism and a lot less about what it is for any one person that's doing it. It's much more about the company that's trying to do it than it is about the actual individual creator. So as an actual individual creator, I find it um, less enthralling. It's still got, there's more gee whiz than there ever was before. Wow, they got into Libya and they could use their sat phones to send pictures out of Libya. That's kind of a gee whiz deal, but, um, and you know, certain people, a certain few people are getting some good work out of Libya, let's say. But, uh, you know, if, if, if you're there now, there's no guarantee that even in a place like Libya that you can make it a uh, financially feasible proposition. That's really the problem. Well, I'll say one thing. All these places where people tend to insert themselves and, and say, how can you take that picture? Uh, you know, the, the, the crying widow at a funeral or something. Well, it's never the crying widow. It's the third cousin. The crying widow looks at you and says, somebody's remembering my husband. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you for coming. Yeah. How many times have you heard that? There's always some do-gooder that's that's three or four levels removed away from anybody that's actually affected. Yeah. They're the ones that slap you from behind and the side of your head. Um, I'm always, I'm always humbled, just amazed at the grace and the kindness that I've always been shown, and you, you've been sh I mean, it's amazing. In the worst situations, in uh, where, 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 where somebody will tell you, oh, you can't even walk out the door, it's so dangerous. You find people that are, that are just so nice and welcoming. I've, I've always been, and that's, and that's what this business, I mean, you're always depending on the kindness of strangers to let you into their home, give you a place to make pictures. and. And it's always there. I, that's that's what I've learned. It, it, it required so much craft, and all of that sense of craft is gone. That to me is the biggest complaint I have. And I'm not even. I was like already probably much left of, less of a crafts person than any of those guys were. But I see the kids from today. You know, they they have their cameras. They shoot a picture. They look on the back. They adjust it four stops because they got it wrong the first time. Shoot it again, adjust it one stop, shoot it, they got it. Hey man, I'm a photographer. And then they, you know, and then they go work it in post, you know. It is just a different sense of what the craft is. And there's so little regard. I mean, you have to really hunt to find young photographers who even care about work that was done before them. It's like the... The, the self-validation. It's, 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 it's strange. The self-validation that comes from shooting something and looking at it immediately and telling yourself, I'm a photographer, kind of it has this very deleterious effect of making you not want to be Alfred Eisenstadt or Stan Wayman or Phil Harrington or George Silk or people who actually had to work hard at it. 20 hours a day just to be able to get in a place where they could maybe make a good picture. It wasn't just obvious or given to them, and they couldn't fix it in post. Boy, you could not fix anything in post. There was no post. 
But at the same time, you embrace this new technology. This yeah, I mean, I love what it can do. I, I'm as, I'm kind of, you know, wow, that's cool. As much as the next person, it makes my life in some ways much easier, like everybody else. Shoot it, edit it on the train, go to DC, shoot a job, edit it on the train to New York, uh, plug my computer in that night and send it off to the client. But, you know, I mean, I embrace that, but like, so what? It, it doesn't... What, but really, what's to embrace at that point? Because there was a time when your only job was finding a place to stand, whether that place was on an island in the Pacific, you had to figure out how to get there, find a place to stand, and then make an image. And don't screw that it up was your job. Happens. That yeah. was your job. Yeah. Now, well, your job always included, as Jean Pierre Lafont was always fond of saying, or at least one time that I heard him say it, was, uh, you know, my job is not over until I see the plane pass overhead with my film in it on the way to Paris. And that was the end of your job. Then you right, could go right. have a drink. Right. But it had to, you had to do your your responsibility was to get you had to get kick your that film can in the hand of a as far down right. the road as you could kick it, you know, and and get it into a courier service or find a passenger or ship it in freight, whatever it took to get it out. So, what's your advice to a young kid? He's in college. He's, he's going to Missouri. He's going wherever. Study he wants. engineering. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. I, there's too many people. There are re definitely too many people who want to be photographers. There's probably too many already good photographers for the work that's out there to sustain people. Well, I mean, in a way, that's what the internet offers everybody. I mean, you can you can tell your own story. You can, you know, whether or not it's a financially viable thing. That's a completely other situation. But. But there is certainly now a possibility for every photographer with a laptop and a camera to be able to broadcast and webcast and put your stuff out there and try and be seen. And, uh, and it's amazing the kind of stuff that does rise to the surface. You know, really good stuff does get noticed and talked about and if something kind of goes viral or a lot of people start talking about it. I mean, what is the future now? You know, for us, the magazine world has kind of collapsed of its own weight, uh, being crushed by the internet. And uh, today, the iPad 2 came out, and in addition to being able to do a live video chat with your photo editor, that could be really exciting. The idea of actually trying to translate your life's work into a series of of apps, which it, see, here's the thing. If the iPad actually becomes this appliance that people, and even younger people, this is really, this is the real key, because people up until the age of, well, let's put it this way, people over the age of 30 have kind of grown up in a newspaper magazine culture. If you're under 30, more or less, it's that's kind of an alien thing to you. Maybe if you're in your 20s, yeah, there were newspapers around, you had a few magazines you liked. If you're 17, it's all online. It's all imaginary. It's all virtual. But if the, whatever the new version of the iPad or that kind of device becomes, if that is, becomes the new magazine that people want to hold in their hand and you know, drag their finger across instead of turning a page. Maybe that's where we need to kind of take our work and try and make something out of it. I mean, the real problem is now is that there's no, uh, there's no financial way of sustaining it yet. You know, those formulas haven't been tested. We, we went through this opening volley on the internet where everything was free and then immediately people think after two weeks this is from 10 years ago, that everything should be free, just because it was free and we didn't want to pay for it because we didn't have to pay for it. And now that you have to pay for it in some places, will people actually do that or will it die? Or will there be people who just decide, yeah, there's there's something of value here? got to remember, to why we started doing this. You know, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I kind of had the idea we'd make good money and 
but that wasn't the motivation. The motivation was, like you've said in the past, parachuting in all, all these people's lives uh, for a day or two, anywhere in the world. You have this passport, this camera, you can go anywhere. You can literally go anywhere mm -hmm. and you're accepted there because you have an excuse to be there. Right. And in the meantime, you get to make some good pictures too. So if you can find a way to do that, that's half the battle. Then you just, you make it available in some way for these people, these people, these passionate people that are out there and want that stuff. How do you pay for it? How do you pay your bills? I mean, the thing is you can do one trip like that that you pay for, but after the first one, you need to try and figure out some way to get the other folks who want to enjoy that photography to help pay for it. Now, I never worked for a daily paper and I never worked for wire service. I was terrible at getting caption information. I didn't bother, you know, and I've seen these guys in the middle of an earthquake or a fire. They go up to somebody who's just lost everything. Eh, can I get your name, please, and your age, and where you're from? I'm thinking, oh my God, that is the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. And then a month, a year, or 30 years later, I'm thinking, what a jerk I am for not knowing who any of the people are in my family. Don't delete. Space is cheap. Dele yeah, space will only get cheaper and you can never replace whatever the screw up was. And it's sometimes it's good to look at your screw ups and see how to kind of get get yourself straightened out. You know, do you less do less shooting. Do no do less chimping. And spend some time just looking around without a camera in front of your face. There's a really, really good <laughs> photographer in Washington who I won't name. Works for a wire. And I remember being in some situation with, I think it was Bush too was the president, and we were in a place where he walked by, he kind of walked by us. And I, you know, I, he, he was like, this a like, presidential like, trip or is this a campaign? I can't even remember where it was. It was like mining, 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 and he kind of walked right by us. And and in my like my sixth frame over here, the guy next to me just didn't keep rotating. He just stopped and is already chimping. Already working. And the president's seven feet away from him. And he's like giving up. He needs to see it that bad. You don't need to see it that bad. It'll wait. It'll be around in a millennium. So, like, That's good advice, I think. Take your time. Look, shoot, look, don't chimp. Good piece of advice being we're in Omaha. Robert Pledge, who, uh, founded Contact Press Images with David. While, when I was still a youth of maybe 17 or 18 years old, 19, I don't know, but uh, Bob would say, I'd say, Bob, I want to go to New York, I want to go to Tokyo. He said, Ken, Ken, right now there's a hundred photographers in Tokyo would be love to be in Omaha, Nebraska right now. And you know what, if you can't make a picture wherever you are, maybe, Maybe you're not a photographer. Maybe that's not the place for you to, to be. Um, Don't spend your money just trying to go someplace because it's exotic to take pictures. If you really have the moxie, which is just what he's saying, if you have the moxie to be a photographer, take the pictures within a mile or a block of where you live. Find them. They're there. They're there. They're there. That's the thing with packs with packs of photographers. There's like security, everybody's in the same area, all of us can't be wrong. And if you have a little bit of self-confidence and you can get away from that pack, you know, that's where I think both we've made, that's where we've made a living, I think. All the pictures come I picked this guy from Omaha that contact press images and you know, he, he did well at, the, at a workshop in Maine and I think uh, rest, the rest is prehistory. The rest was just endurance at that point. I think the rest is always endurance. It's what we try and tell our kids, that determination that trumps talent. I sometimes think it would have been fun to be a comedian, but I've been able to be a comedian and a photographer. <laughs> it's, just, it's worked out I've been, pretty I well. I have been very successful as a comedian, but... When, when you're on a 12-hour flight, you got a, a captive audience. <laughs>